me, let, let, let's begin by discussing, discussing the content of the monitoring plan and some guidance and challenges for you, for ship operators, seen through the point of view of both the verifier and your point of view, because this is the point of view we should be at, we should be looking from. So, uh, one of the things with being the last speaker of any panel is that some of the things you want to say have already been said, which makes my presentation be quicker. Therefore, uh, the monitoring plan, as you of course know, is a mandatory requirement according to Article 6. It must be submitted to an independent verifier. It has to be successfully assessed by the 31st of August, and it has to be, <coughs> sorry, it has to be um, submitted by, for assessment by the 31st of August, and actually assessed by the 31st of December. <coughs> These are hard legal deadlines, but that doesn't mean that you cannot start earlier, and it's our, it's our suggestions that you do so that you ideally miss all the bottlenecks that are going to take place and, and maximize your operational excellence. Uh, of course, we, make, we always make a distinction between monitoring plan assessment and emissions <laughs> report verification, which only happens in 2019. So for your ease of thinking, just think of the word verify only for 2019. So nobody has to use the word verify up until 2019. A monitoring plan outlines the procedures in place to monitor, collect, uh, control, and report the data. And it demonstrates how the ship is compliant with the EU MRV regulation. Uh, it compiles all information about the ship's systems, uh, which have to be complete, <coughs> accurate, relevant, and compliant. And, and that's a nice part of the story, where relevant, references should be made to compatible monitoring uh, elements from existing management systems, for example, SEM, SMS, and so on and so forth. There are six distinct sections in the monitoring plan. I shall start with section uh, part A and part F so that we get them out of the way. Part A should not take you more than 25 seconds to complete. It's just your name and version number. Part F is where you state your further comments if you have any. So anything between zero and 50 seconds. Let's concentrate on parts B, C, and D, and E, which have some substance, if you like. Part B should not take you more than six minutes at the very top. I mean, it's just the name, the, the name of the vessel, the IMO number, what sort of emission sources, what's your office address, you know, difficult things like that. Then part C, activity data. Okay, this is where it becomes interesting. This is where we, you, you, you need to actually state the emission sources, the fuels used, the distance travel, the time at sea, and all that. And part D, you just describe how you manage to cover any data gaps of, of part C if they appear. Right? So this is where you document your data gaps. And part E is, has to do with company management. Your quality assurance, your reviews, your tactical reviews, your updates when something in operations changes. And that's it. That's the monitoring plan. Verifania shipping stepped into your shoes. We usually do that. That's the best way to serve someone, I think. You need to step into their shoes and look at it from the ship owner's point of view. So we were like, if we were a ship owner, what would we have done? We came up and we suggest a six step process that you can use that is very easy for you to, to complete. And, and in conjunction with Verifania shipping gives you a smooth monitoring plan assessment. What is that? Simple, six steps. Step number one. Easy peasy, you list all your vessels, you delete any vessels which are below 5,000. That way, uh, sorry, GT, you remove any vessels, any vessels that do not operate or are, do not plan to operate in the European Union or not. That's a management decision. Uh, and I would said, we would suggest that you identify between vessel families, uh, vessels, and lead vessels. Step two, get acquainted with the regulation. You being here today helps you get acquainted with the regulation. Reading about the regulation helps you get acquainted with the regulations. There are fora, there is everything. So once you get acquainted with the regulation, step three, do this. Segregate the procedures into company-specific procedures that can be replicated for all company vessels. And what are these? These are the company-specific information, our address and uh, all that. The data gap management and the quality management of the EQMRB regulation. Then start zooming in into the ship family specific procedures. And we, once these are done, then start zooming in into the lead vessel procedures. 
all in all, well, about a week. To do that, there is a number of very important documents that will help you. And you should have next to you. So you go to your library, you take the document. From our experience, we've seen that about 90% of the monitoring plan is there. So the monitoring plan, you already do. It's just there in different bits and pieces that you need to collect and reference. That's it. Uh, then, use any format for your monitoring plan that you wish. There is no restriction to that. You want it to be Word, Excel, PDF. I don't know how you work with PDF, but you know, why not? Uh, something that your IT system can provide for you. Or you can also use very famous shipping extranet. Uh, which guides you through the six-step process and, and sort of like helps you complete it. With all this in hand, all you need, by now, you, have, you will have a robust draft monitoring plan for your lead vessel of your vessel family. And this is where you call your accredited verifier and we begin our assessment cycle. With your robust draft monitoring plan, we will have an office visit. The office visit will, of course, um, have as a byproduct an issues log. This issues log is being gradually slow, uh, closed within the extranet, and again, in two weeks, it's done. We will work from lead ships, to, from family ships, sorry, to lead ships, to sister ships. We will be checking, we will, do, we will be doing conformity checks for how, between how the MRV works, what are the company procedures, and what does the monitoring plan state. So all these three have to reconcile. This is just a picture of our extranet. Uh, you, can have, you, you can make a free account. You can start uploading your monitoring plans and start playing with it. It's completely free for everyone to do. And this is where I have to tell you that, uh, and this is news actually for, to, to be shared within Green 4 c We have not issued our press release yet. It's coming out in the next days. So Verifavia Shipping is now the first and the only double accredited verifier in the world. We got our first accreditation from UCAS on the 1st of March, and then we got a second accreditation from COFRAC, France, on the 21st of March. Uh, these are the companies we've worked with, either shipping companies or ICT providers, because one other thing we do is that we certify EU MRV model, modules, so software that supports the regulation. And this is where you can find us. Our HQ are in Paris, London, and of course Athens given that uh, our shipping is 50% is of the EU MRV regulation is in this room. And of course, you can expand your EU MRV knowledge by uh, coming to our free EU MRV seminars that usually take place once per month. The next one is tomorrow. It's for free. You may join. Thank you very, very, very much.